Welcome back. This is part five of the Nutrition and Surgery modules. My name is Laura and I'm a registered dietitian at Toronto Western Hospital in the bariatric program. Today I'm going to be talking about nutrition complications. Bariatric surgery is a major surgery and like other surgeries has some risk involved. After surgery, your digestive tract and diet will be changed so there are some possible nutrition complications that may occur. A complication is a new condition that develops because of your surgery. Pictured here are some of the possible complications that may occur. They include nausea and vomiting, dehydration, food intolerance, lactose intolerance, diarrhea, constipation, hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, gas, dumping syndrome, and hair loss. Information about these complications can be found starting on page 33 in your nutrition manual. In this video, we're only going to focus on the most common complications, which include nausea and vomiting, dehydration, constipation, dumping syndrome, and hair loss. You may have nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain after bariatric surgery. Nausea in the first week may be your body's reaction to the anesthesia that they use during surgery. After this, it could be for a variety of reasons. If you overfill your small stomach, your body will reject that food. It will cause pain and pressure, and it will take a while for this feeling to go away. The best way to prevent this is to measure your food. Your portion sizes will likely start around a quarter cup and will slowly increase to about a one cup portion. Another way to prevent nausea and vomiting is to pace yourself. Really focus on putting your fork down in between bites and taking small bites. We recommend having one teaspoon at a time as having a bite that's too big can cause it to get stuck in your stomach. If your food does get stuck, there's nothing to do but wait for it to pass. Sometimes your body will reject that food and bring it back up. The worst thing you can do is take a big drink of something to help make it pass, as this will worsen the discomfort. Some people find that patting their chest or moving around helps to relieve some of the pressure. Chewing your food thoroughly is also very important. We recommend chewing each bite 20 to 30 times. Eating and drinking at the same time can cause nausea and vomiting because the food can be flushed to the stomach too quickly. It can also cause you to feel full very quickly. For this reason, we recommend that you separate your fluids and solids by 30 minutes. This means that you won't have anything to drink for 30 minutes before and after eating. Swallowing air may also cause issues. We recommend that you refrain from chewing gum, drinking carbonated beverages, or using a straw. Eating foods that are too dry or tough can again cause it to feel like it's become stuck in your stomach. We recommend that you prepare your meals in a way that will help them to maintain their moisture to prevent this. Dehydration can also cause you to feel nauseous. Be sure to follow the fluid guidelines even if you are feeling nauseous. You might have to trial different calorie-free water enhancers or water temperatures before you find a routine that works for you. All of this information about nausea and vomiting prevention is available on page 34 in your nutrition manual. Dehydration means that your body does not have enough fluid. This is common after surgery as it's often difficult to drink enough water because of the size of your stomach. Dehydration is most likely to occur in the first few months after surgery, in the hot summer months, and if you're experiencing vomiting and diarrhea. Having to separate your food and fluids by 30 minutes also makes this difficult and incre can increase your risk of dehydration. The signs and symptoms of dehydration are thirst, dry mouth, lips, skin, and eyes, headache, feeling lightheaded or dizzy, feeling irritable or tired, not urinating often, in, or having dark colored urine. Keep yourself hydrated by sipping on water or low calorie fluids all day long. We recommend that you get about six to eight cups of fluids per day. You can also try sucking on ice chips or sugar-free popsicles as this counts towards your fluid requirements. You may wanna try different calorie free liquids to help meet your fluid requirements, such as those that are pictured here. They include infused water, Gatorade Zero, Vitamin Water Zero, Nest Tea Zero, Kool-Aid, no added sugar, Mio and Crystal Light. Plain tea and coffee that are decaffeinated are also appropriate. These ideas as well as others are listed on page 36 in your nutrition manual. Constipation is quite common after surgery. This occurs because you are eating less, so you'll be having fewer bowel movements. True constipation occurs when stool is hard, dry, painful, and difficult to pass. It's normal to have one to three bowel movements of soft stool every one to three days after surgery. Constipation can worsen if you're not getting enough fluid, fiber, or if you're not moving around enough. 
You will be given a basic protocol to follow regarding when to use laxatives and stool softeners by the nurses after your surgery. Here are some examples of how you can incorporate fiber into your diet throughout the diet phases. While you're on the liquid diet, oatmeal is a good option. Pureed diet, you may add some pureed prunes, bran cereal that's soaked in milk, and during the soft diet, you may add some whole grain crackers, cooked fruits, and vegetables. We're often asked about fiber supplements like Metamucil. Metamucil is a psyllium-based fiber that requires a significant amount of water in order to be effective. If you're not getting enough fluids, it can worsen the constipation, and for this reason, we do not recommend taking Metamucil. It's best to meet your fiber requirements through food sources, but adding a Benefiber fiber supplement, which is an inulin-based fiber and does not require as much fluid to be effective, may be beneficial for some people. Another common nutrition complication that individuals may experience after surgery is called dumping syndrome. This occurs when food that is primarily high fat or high in sugar passes through the stomach and into the small intestine before it's been broken down. The body then reacts by drawing fluids into the small intestine and flushes the food it can occur right after you've eaten or a few hours later. Foods eaten prior and eating and drinking at the same time can cause dumping syndrome. Some signs and symptoms are heart palpitation, stomach cramping and pain, diarrhea, nausea or upset stomach, dizziness, cold sweats, flushing, and sweating. There are some foods that are common that cause dumping syndrome. These include ice cream, chocolate, candy, fried foods, baked goods, and sweetened sauces. Eating these in even small quantities, like having a bite or two, can cause dumping syndrome. There's more information about dumping syndrome on page 45 in your nutrition manual. Hair loss is a common side effect of weight loss surgery. Hair loss is a response to the emotional and physiological stress that your body undergoes in the months after surgery. It tends to be the worst around months four to nine after surgery and typically stops once your weight has stabilized. At that point, your hair tends to begin growing back as well. To prevent hair loss or ensure that it is not worsened, it's important that you take your vitamins and minerals, meet your protein requirements, and complete the blood work that the team has asked you to. Um, if there is a concern with any of your lab values, such as your iron or zinc, which can be associated with hair loss, then the bariatric team will give you some recommendations on how to supplement this. It can certainly be distressing to lose your hair, so many people will try taking natural supplements like biotin to counteract this. Unfortunately, there are no supplements that have been proven to work. Moreover, some of these natural supplements can actually have negative health outcomes. For example, excessive amount of biotin can throw off your thyroid labs. We recommend avoiding these supplements as they are often expensive and they lack the evidence to show that they're beneficial for hair loss prevention. Finally, while it's not a nutrition-related complication, we do want to advise you about alcohol. It is important to abstain from drinking alcohol for the first six months after surgery. This may increase the risk of ulcers, and it's also contributing to empty calories and sugar. Some research shows that having alcohol after bariatric surgery can be more addictive. You will not be able to tolerate the same amount of alcohol that you could before having surgery, as your stomach does not create the same amount of the enzyme that breaks down alcohol. This means that you can become intoxicated very quickly, but that the effect of the alcohol will also fade very quickly, thus increasing the addictive effect. If you have any questions about the nutrition-related complications that may occur after surgery, please do not hesitate to contact one of the registered dietitians at the Toronto Western Hospital in the bariatric department.